chloride eat there. TCE, metal pollution. Allowing change. Biochemists know that a mineral in raw element form always inhibits the enzyme using that mineral. Copper from meat and vegetables you eat is essential. Inorganic copper like you would get from a copper bottle, kettle, or copper plumbing is carcinogenic. Unfortunately, the inorganic form of metals is what pervades our environment. We put metal jewelry on our skin, eat bread, bake in metal pans, and drink water from metal plumbing. Another obvious metallic threat is tooth fillings. Mercury amalgam fillings, despite the assurance of the American Dental Association, are not safe. And sometimes the mercury is polluted with thallium, even more toxic than mercury. Gold and silver seem to have fewer harmful effects, but no one should have any pure metal in or on their body. Other prevailing Toxic metals include lead and cadmium from soldered and galvanized plumbing, nickel and chromium from dental wear and cosmetic, and aluminum from food and canned drinks and cooking pots. Moles produce some of the most toxic substance known called mycotoxins. One small moldy fruit or vegetable can pollute a huge batch of juice, jam, or other product. Although moles are alive and can be killed by sapping, mycotoxins are not and must be detoxified by your liver. And because mycotoxins are so extremely poisonous, a tiny amount can incapacitate a part of the liver for days. Aflatoxin is the most common mycotoxin I detect. It is produced by moles that grow on quite a variety of plants. For that reason, I am always cautioning people to eat only perfect citrus fruit and never drink commercial fruit juice. One of the thousands of oranges that go into the batch of orange juice you drink, one is sure to be moldy, and that is all it takes to give your liver a setback. A heavy dose of vitamin C helps the liver recover quickly. It also helps get rid of aflatoxin before it is consumed right in the food container. So keep a plastic shaker, vitamin C powder handy and use it like salt and all your food. There are 13 other mycotoxins I have searched for in our foods. Breathing in dust is quite bad for you. So your body rejects it by sneezing, coughing, spitting up and out. Imagine breathing in broken glass particles. They cut into the lungs in a thousand places and couldn't be cough up. They would travel, imagine swallowing a needle or open pain. If the tip was blown, it could move through the intestine. But because it is sharp, it gets caught in your tissues, then work its way deeper and deeper. Would we ever knowingly breathe in broken glass? We are justifiably afraid of it in our food or under our bare feet. We are unaware that it fills our homes when fiberglass insulation is left imperfectly sealed off. Any hole made through the ceiling or wall, even if covered with cloth, lets swarms of broken glass bits into the house ear. Ear contents flow inward into your living space, so all holes leading to the attic or insulated spaces must be sealed airtight. Of course, 
Fiberglass should never be used in home constructions. Drippers are around water eaters. The best advice is to have they it all removed while you are away they and then vacuum the dust. Occasional exposure by house builders working outdoors does much less harm. Chronic exposure with a single small hole in the ceiling does a lot of harm leading to cyst formation and that cyst is a perfect place for parasites and bacteria to settle and multiply. When the intestinal fluke settles, there it becomes malignant. Cancer patients with solid tumors have either fiberglass or asbestos in them. Asbestos is another tiny bit sharp as glass that moves through your body like a swordfish impaling your cells until it too gets rooted into a cyst. We have been led to believe that we no longer have asbestos in our homes because we have outlawed the fireproofing material it was used in. While that may be true, the source I find most often is all too prevalent, the, the clothes dryer belt. As it gets hot, the belt releases a blast of asbestos, particles that are forced through the seeds of your dryer and also openings in your exhaust holes by the high pressure formed inside. It is now in your hair. Is being put upon Chemical toxins, chlorofluorocarbon, CFCs, or freon is the refrigerant in your ear conditioner and refrigerator coils. Chlorofluorocarbon, CFCs are suspected of causing the ozone hole above the south pole. All cancer sufferers test positive for CFCs in the cancerous organ. I have preliminary evidence that it is CFCs that attract other pollutants, fiberglass, metals, PCBs to form a growing tumors instead of allowing their excretion. This would make it a super carcinogen. How could you detect CFCs leaking in your home? By the time your ear conditioner or refrigerator needs recharging, you have been exposed for a long time. We desperately need an inexpensive in home test for this unsuspected killer. Arsenic. Is used in pesticide. Why would we poison ourselves along with the cockroaches? It is because we cannot see it happening. Just as we couldn't see the fiberglass floating in the air, our diligent scientists have studied the mechanism of arsenic poisoning in great detail. Between your then why list are we allowed to put it to on our lands to be carried what into our carpets via shoes? Fill what is empty. Polychlorinated biphenyls, today, PCB, oily compounds with wonderfully Never useful electric Ever properties were originally used in transformers Formers until their inability to break down into less toxic substance in our environment was spotlighted. Banned from use, I find them in most commercial soap and detergents. Is transformer oil being disposed of by selling it to soap makers? Formaldehyde is used to cure foam. As a result, foam furniture, pillows and mattresses give a formaldehyde for about two years after manufacturing. If you sleep with your nose buried in a new foam pillow all night, 
you are risking major lung problems. Good.